Mrs. Caster, in the three letters that we have in evidence here that you wrote to uh, Lynn Pulaski, how many times do you recall referring to your daughter Ashley? Probably a lot. And how many times in those letters did you tell Lynn that you still love your daughter Ashley? Um, I don't know. How about not one single time? Does that sound correct? Could be. Could be. Could be that you referred to her very negatively, didn't you? I'm sure I did. That's right, because she killed, after all, your two husbands, didn't she? Yes, she did. She did. Let's talk about that. <clears throat> Let's talk about a list of reasons why Ashley killed. We'll start with Michael Wallace, her own father. If you had to uh, put these on a list for the jury, let's start with reason number one. I don't know. No, I'll overrule. Go ahead. I can't give you a reason why she would do it. So if I give you ten reasons, we're going to start at number one, and number one is I don't know. Did anybody in the year 2000 know Ashley Wallace better than you? Probably not. Did anybody in the year 2005 know Ashley Wallace better than you? Probably not. And you, as you just said, have been in jail for 16 months for a crime you claim you didn't commit, correct? That's true. And your answer to this jury, when I ask you to give them the number one reason why Ashley Wallace killed her own father with antifreeze and then stuffed rat poison down his throat, your answer is, I don't know, correct? That's correct. Let's talk about your testimony from yesterday, and then we'll talk about some other things. First of all, for historical perspective, tell me uh, Ashley's birthday. July 6, 1987. So at the time of her father's death, she was 12. Correct. And uh, you're, you indicated to this jury that Michael visited a doctor in December of 99. Do you remember how he got there? Uh, no, I don't. Did you take him? No, I did not. I was at work. Did he complain to you about his health in December of 99? Uh, the weekend before he went to the doctors, he said that he was feeling dizzy and nauseous. Okay. And you claimed that you made an appointment for Michael on Wednesday. I called on Tuesday, and the appointment was for Wednesday. Can you explain to the jury why there's absolutely no record of that? Objection, Judge. No, I'll overrule it. Go ahead. He did not go to the appointment. Why would there be a record of an appointment that he didn't go to? Because doctor's offices, if you're going to ask me a question, take down records of phone calls and appointments. Can you explain to the jury why there's absolutely no record of any appointment for Michael Wallace? There was an appointment made for Wednesday morning. Well, I didn't ask you that. I asked you if you could explain to the jury why there's no record of that. I do not work in that office. I can't answer that. Go ahead. Could it be because that's a lie? No, it's not. Okay. Now, Ashley and Bree stayed home on the Monday before Michael died, correct? Yes. The two uh, preteens had enough sense to realize that their father was sick and they wanted to stay home with him. Isn't that right? No, that's not right. And you went to work on Monday? Yes, I did. And what kind of shape was Michael in on Monday, the man who was the love of your life? He wasn't feeling well. He was, had been complaining of being dizzy and nauseous. Did you hear Dr. Stopper's testimony about the stages of antifreeze poisoning? Yes. And did you hear about the agonizing way someone dies under those circumstances? Yes. About how they can't walk, they can't talk, they get dizzy, their kidneys shut down, they're in extreme pain. You heard all that? Yes, I did. You didn't see any of that on Monday, did you? Michael was talking fine. He spoke to me before I left. That's your definition of okay, right? Eyes open and breathing. That's what you told us yesterday? when you're talking about your second husband, David. So under your criteria, he was, his eyes were open and he was breathing, so he must have been okay. He was talking to me, interacting with me. And your two daughters knew that he was sick. We all knew he was sick. You that knew he was, you were the adult though. Yes. Okay. And you, um, <clears throat> you didn't see anything other, any other signs other than what you've already told us about Michael's sickness. No. Now, where did you keep the rat poison in your house in Weesport? There was a box of decon out on the back porch where, in the back of the house. Now, did you, uh, did you hide that from your children so to keep them safe? No, they were old enough to know what it was. They were old enough to know what antifreeze was too? Yes. Ashley used antifreeze a lot when she was driving her car back in uh, 2000? Objection, Judge. Overruled. No. 
And uh, so the, uh, the rat poison, did you have mice in the house or rats? On the back porch, yes, there was evidence of mice. Okay. And so your, your, your testimony is that Ashley knew where that was? <coughs> yes. So when she testified, she had no idea about that. That was incorrect on her part? Yes. Okay. Now, would you agree with me that a 12-year-old uh, that kills her own father with antifreeze and rat poison to hurry the process along, would it be fair to characterize that person as a psychotic monster? Objection, Judge. No, I'll overrule it. a person who has some problems. Well, you know, I get up in the morning and I got a shovel in my driveway. That's a problem. I'm talking about a psychotic monster type problem. Would you agree with me? No, I'm not going to. I would not define anybody who has a mental illness as a psychotic monster. Oh, so Ashley has a mental illness. Um, <laughs> if anybody could do that, I would say they did. Okay. Now, now we're making some progress. So Ashley has a mental illness. How would you characterize the mental illness that Ashley had when she was 12? I didn't say Ashley had a mental illness. You don't think Ashley has a mental illness? I did not say that I thought Ashley had a mental illness. Okay, well, let me ask you now. Do you think that when she was 12 years old, Ashley had a mental illness as you sit here today? Um, I don't, I can't answer that. You think she killed Michael? Yes. And it wasn't just, I came home, I lost my temper, I hit him with a, a frying pan, and oh my God, he's dead. This was a long time periodic poisoning of her own father, correct? Objection, Judge. Overruled. Correct? Uh, yes. And then we've heard medical testimony that apparently the killer wasn't satisfied with the progress they were making, so they jammed some rat poison down the guy's throat, correct? Objection, Judge. That's not the testimony. I'll overrule it. Correct? Um, I believe that's what they said. Not in those words, but yes. Okay. So... That person has got to be seriously, seriously ill, mentally ill in your opinion. Yes. At 12 years old, right? She was 12, yes. Now, tell the jury what signs you saw of this aberrant, serious, psychotic mental illness. I didn't use those words, but there was a change in Ashley when her father died. She would. No, 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 no. She didn't get psychotic after she killed him. She had to be psychotic before she killed him. What signs did you see of that mental illness? None. How about from the time up until David Castor's death? What signs did you see? Of Ashley? Of Ashley's mental illness. As I said, after Ashley's father died, she had withdrawn. She became distant. She spent a lot of time alone. Wow, that sounds really weird, doesn't it? A girl, a 12-year-old that lost her father, she got withdrawn? Was this an increase in the mental illness that she was suffering from? You asked me what I observed, and I am telling you. Go ahead. Okay. She was withdrawn. For a long time, she just did not participate in life in general. When we moved to Liverpool, it became even worse. And then you got her, some, you got her on Ritalin, and she got better. No, Ashley was put on Ritalin in the fourth grade. Ashley had been on Ritalin until she graduated high school. Okay, so, so there wasn't any other trips to a, a doctor to get her medication or get her mental health, was there? Yeah, she had a counselor at school that she spoke with. Why don't we do this? Let's start with the top four things that Ashley Wallace did wrong in her life, according to her mother. Number one, got to be, she killed her father with antifreeze and rat poison, right? Yes. Number two, she killed her stepfather over the course of three days with antifreeze, correct? Yes. Number three, this little mentally ill murderer is letting me take the fall for her. And when she tried to kill herself and came to, she lied about it and said she really didn't try to kill herself. That's number three, right? Yes. What's number four? I don't know. I mean, did she like kill the family dog or something, or yes, set the yes. bathroom on fire, or <clears throat> no overlook? What's number four? Well, actually, Ashley did 
set our house on fire and when we lived in Weedsport. We forgot to tell us on yesterday she's an arsonist. Okay, <coughs> now we have number four. When did she commit this arson? Uh, when we lived on Bell Street, she was smoking in the bathroom and threw a cigarette butt into the garbage can that caught the house on fire. The whole house burned down? No, the bathroom was gutted. The bathroom was gutted? <laughs> she, so, what's number five? I mean, she didn't do that on purpose, did she? I, a, I don't think so. A kid making a mistake, she was smoking, she threw a cigarette at a smolder to get some damage to the bathroom. All right, what's number five? I don't know. She shoplift? She get trouble at school? Did she did she sneak under the mattresses and pull those labels off that you're not supposed to pull off? I mean you can't think of number five? No. Now um, let me ask you let me ask you this. Talking about Mike Wallace, you um, you said you gave a statement to Detective Lashinsky, right? Yes, I did. And you also said that although the entire statement was true, there were some things left out. Yes, I did. Okay. What were some of the things that were left out? There's a, a gap in time on Friday from... Um, when I started to prepare dinner until um, there's a huge gap there. Um, there were minor details that were left out. It doesn't talk about the four loads of laundry that I did that weekend, the showers, the phone calls that I made, things like that. Okay. You said you went to the uh, post office and mailed a registered letter, yes. correct? Yes. On Friday that uh, this would be uh, the weekend that David Castor died? Yes. And uh, what post office did you go to? Uh, the one in uh, Seneca Mall. And who did you mail the letter to? It was to the uh, tax department, tax compliance department. So there'd be a record of that, right? There should be, yes. Okay. Have you made any effort to, has your lawyer made any effort to subpoena that information? Not that I'm aware of. Well, wouldn't that prove your story? That you went to the post office? Yes. And we have your good word for it, right? Well, I did it. And, well, um, your eight-page uh, affidavit to Detective Lashinsky, of course, doesn't mention that at all, does it? That's some of the information that she left out. That's in the time frame that is not in that statement. She left that out, she left that out intentionally in your judgment? I didn't say that. Detective Lashinsky interviewed me. She made notes. She then went and dictated a statement to a transcriptionist. What she chose to put in that statement was up to her. I did not type that so statement. She's part of the conspiracy against you with I Ashley not say and Bree that. and Matt Gandino and the rest of these people, right? I did not say that. Let me ask you this. You clearly, when you were speaking to Detective Lashinsky, were making an effort to convince her that David, your husband, had been suicidal. No, I did not. You said everything in the statement was true, right? That's correct. And you're telling us now that you didn't make any references to Detective Lashinsky about David being suicidal? I never said David was suicidal. I said David had some strange behaviors and he was having issues and problems after his father died, but I never used the word suicidal. You certainly were trying to convince her of that, weren't you? No, she asked me what his state of mind was and how he was behaving. And I ask you yes, no question, ma'am. You answer yes, no, otherwise I'll rephrase it for you. Okay. Just like you were trying to convince the doctors in 2007 that Mike Wallace had bad heart. Right? I don't understand what your question is. Well, I'll make it very simple. When you were at the hospital, you volunteered to the doctors that David had a bad heart, didn't you? I never said David had a bad heart. You were telling me on your oath that you never said that, that it's not in any of the medical records. I never said that David had a bad heart. You, had, you never said he had a history of heart disease in his family? David, no. Uh, Michael, excuse me. Uh, forgive me if I get the victims confused. You were talking about Michael to the doctors in 2007 at the hospital, and you were telling the doctors that Michael had a history of heart problems. You don't object. 2007? 2000. 
Michael does have a family history of heart issues. And you told the doctors that in 2000? Yes, I did. And you told them that you didn't want an autopsy? Yes, I did. And you told them that uh, you thought that he probably died of a heart attack? No, I did not. And you know now that he did not die of a heart attack, right? Yes. Okay. Were you curious in 2000 about the health of your two children? Of course. And you would want to know, would you not, why one of their parents had died so that they could make proper preparations in their life to guard against any possible disease, correct? Correct. So the best way to do that would be to have an autopsy of Michael to see, in fact, what he died from to protect Ashley and Bree. Isn't that correct? That wasn't necessary. The doctor has said that it was a heart attack. So the doctor came in, Dr. Allen? Yes. Right. Are you aware that Dr. Allen uh, never even saw your husband? Objection. In death? Yes, he did. He was at the hospital. <laughs> All over. Look. All right. Can you explain to me how it is a doctor looks at a person and says, hmm, heart attack. I don't know how the doctors came to that conclusion. There were three doctors that took care of you Michael didn't that do day. A, you didn't do a darn thing to overrule them and say, hey, hold on, guys. I've got two daughters. I'm concerned about their health. I want to know what Michael died from. Perform an autopsy so I can protect my children. Did you say that, yes or no? No, I did not. Now, when you talked to this jury yesterday, I, I took some notes on your testimony, and when you were talking about your husband, David, on Saturday night, you said that he was staggering, that he had difficulty standing, that he had collapsed on the floor, that he got a gash on his leg, that he was vomiting, that he couldn't get out of the tub on his own volition, that you left him still on the floor on Saturday night, unable to move that he couldn't get into his own bed. You remember all those things that you said? Yes. And then you said to us, he appeared to be OK. Would you tell me what your definition is, Mrs. Castor, of not OK? What would he have to have done so you could say, holy moly, this guy's sick? Objection, Judge. I'll overrule it. At the time when those. No, 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 no. Answer my question and be specific. I am trying to answer your question. Go ahead, tell us. The events that happened. No, no, no. What more is it that you needed to see so that you're, under your criteria, he would not be okay? I can't answer that question. I don't know. At that time, I did what I thought was right. I think you said he was breathing and his eyes were open. You remember that? About David? Yeah. No, I don't remember making that specific statement. You don't statement. remember saying, he appeared OK. He was breathing and his eyes were open. You don't remember saying that yesterday? No, but I'm sure if you wrote it down, I did. So you wake up at 6 AM on Sunday morning. Where are the showers in your house in the year 2005? We're uh, down the hall. There's only one shower in the house. It's in the bathroom, the main bathroom upstairs. Now, I heard you say something yesterday that caught my attention. I want to talk about it with you right now. You said you woke up at 6 a.m. Sunday morning. You're on the couch. Mm -hmm. Is it light out or dark? 6 o'clock in the morning in, in August. It's not too dark. You hear the shower running. And then you said an interesting thing. You said, I assumed it was Ashley. Mm -hmm. Would that be because you knew that David was passed out near death in his bed? No. I couldn't have been David. Because Ashley had to be to work that morning. David had been sleeping for 72 hours. Maybe he got up and wanted to take a shower. Why would you assume it was Ashley? Because Ashley had to be up to go to work. I understand that. Why couldn't it have been David? You asked me why I assumed it was Ashley. I assumed it was Ashley because she had to be up at that time to go to work. But actually, before you said, I assumed it was Ashley, you actually said in your testimony yesterday, you said, David was in bed. I assumed it was Ashley. How did you know David was in bed? So where he was when I left him last. 
Couldn't you have gotten up? Sure. So then why did you say David was in bed? That's where I believed him to be. Because you knew he was in bed, because you'd been poisoning him from Friday night onward, hadn't you? No, sir. No. Did Ashley poison him? I did not poison him. When did Ashley poison him? I can't answer that question. Well, was it Friday night? When did she have an opportunity to do it Friday night? She was home alone with David. On Friday night? Friday afternoon, yes. Friday afternoon. And even though, even though you gave an eight-page affidavit to Detective Lashinsky, and even though you talked to Detective Spinelli for three hours, the first time in your life that you've told anyone that Ashley was alone with David on Friday night was yesterday in this courtroom. Yes or no? That's not true. You told Spinelli that? I told Lashinsky that. And she didn't put it in the statement? No, she didn't. And you read the statement and you said, whoops, you left something out here. I did. And, and Lashinsky ignored you and said, hey, don't worry about it, it's all paperwork, just sign this thing. Is that what happened? She said it needed to be a general overview of the events. It was just a record of the weekend. This is an eight-page affidavit. It's got to be 4,000 words. You, you, you're talking about details about who had what for dinner and who went to McDonald's. And you're telling me that just happenstance, she leaves out the fact that you're now claiming that Ashley and your husband were, were alone on Friday night. Yes or no? I was not with her when she dictated that statement to the transcriptionist. Now, I, I, you know, I got to ask you about this. On, on Monday, On Monday, you went to work at the business? You didn't go home? No. You could have worked at home, right? No, I was supposed to go to the business that day. And your testimony is, on your oath, that Monday morning, you called David how many times on his cell? A few. I, I, I What's can't... What's a few? Three or four. And you called him how many times on the landline at home? At the time, I believed I had called him more, but apparently I've only, I only called home once. Once? Was that because you had an opportunity to listen to the two people from the telephone company? No. I believed that I made several phone calls that morning to different people. Well, the incontrovertible, irrefutable, physical, factual, scientific evidence is that on his cell phone and on his landline phone, you called him one single time. Do you dispute that? The house phone, yes. I only called the house once. No, 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 I'm talking about his cell phone. His cell phone was shut off. It did not register. Did you listen to the testimony of the people from the phone company? It doesn't matter if his cell phone was shut off. Objection, Judge. That's not a question. Did you hear that testimony from them? That was the people of the house phone, not the cell phone. Phone company part of the conspiracy against you too, Mrs. Castor? That's objection. I'll sustain that. By the way, you talked about the money you received yesterday. You left out a lot of stuff that you got out of this deal of the death of David, didn't you? Did you leave out his IRA? Uh, yeah, I did receive money from an IRA. Oh, yeah, I did receive some money from an IRA. That was, uh, what, like $1,000 or uh, how much? I don't remember offhand. You don't remember? No. How about $19,307.02? Three, $19, Does that sound right? Could be. Yeah. I mean, you, I was listening to you yesterday, Mrs. Kasser. I thought you lost money on the deal. You got a 50 grand. You had all these things to pay. Now we're up to 69,000. You got the $50,000 from the life insurance, right? Yes. Well, no, I did not receive $50,000 from his life insurance policy. I didn't receive $50,000. Oh, uh, you received most of it. Yeah. Then you got $16,000 from the Syracuse Fire Department Credit Union, where she sold one of his vehicles to your pal Danny and Mike Coleman, right? That wasn't part of the estate. Well, it was $16,000. It was David's car, wasn't it? It was marital property at the time, yes. Yeah. So now we're up to what? I don't know. Let me keep going here. Brosdex auction, $32,000 from stuff at the business, including some peak antifreeze that they sold, minus their commission. You pocketed $28,672 from that, didn't you? That went into the estate account, yes? Yeah. No, that's not part of the estate account. That's from the auction of Brostec, right? That was for to sell the assets of the business, and that went into the estate account to pay the debts. 
then you get a, a fee for $6,000 as the executrix of the estate, right? That was for monies that I paid for certain things, yes. And then Mr. Churko sent you a check for $60,000 from the estate. That was what was left after all of the property had been sold and all the debt had been paid. That's what I got from the $60, estate. $60,000? Yes. All right. And then you sold, what is this, a Tundra? What's that? Another that's vehicle? my truck. Oh, that's your truck. Okay, well, that's something you bought. All right, leave that out. So we got the, uh, the insurance company just under 50000 We got the IRA of 19000 we got the uh, we got the truck for another what sixteen thousand, from and then we got the auction for almost thirty thousand. That money and then didn't. We got the estate of David Cancer check from Mr. Churchill for sixty thousand and your executrix fee of six thousand. You made a lot of money on this, didn't you? No, I did not. That thirty thousand dollars from the is the excuse auction. Me, excuse me. Question was asked and answered. This money went where? The $60,000 from the estate, yes. I got a question for you. Wednesday <coughs> night and Wednesday afternoon, were you on the computer at any time during that day? No, I don't think so. I don't remember. You were asked that question. Then your lawyer asked you like a couple of questions later, do you remember typing that day? And you said, no, absolutely not. How is it that you're certain you weren't typing at the keyboard <laughs> When you can't even remember whether or not you were at the computer. Well, if I wasn't at the computer, I couldn't be typing. Well, you didn't say you weren't at the computer. You said you weren't sure if you were at the computer. How can you be not sure whether or not you were at the computer, but you're certain that you weren't typing? How can that be? I answered the question he asked me. I know you answered the question. That's not answering the question I asked you. How can you be sure that you weren't typing, but not sure if you were at the computer? Don't you type when you're at the computer? Yeah. Can't operate the computer without doing a little of this stuff, right? True. Okay. So yesterday you said, in response to this question, were you at the computer on Wednesday? You said, I really don't know. I can't remember, right? Yes. And then he asked you, did you type anything that day? And you said, absolutely not. He actually said, I didn't ask if you typed anything that day. Well, <clears throat> I'll, I'll overrule you. didn't truth. characterize my question, Judge. What did you ask me? I asked her if she remembered while she was on that phone call whether she was typing something. I stand corrected. While you were on that phone call, were you typing? And you said, absolutely not. Okay, while well, I was on that phone call, no, I was not typing. Well, how can you be so sure? I remember the phone call. I've heard it played. So? So, I wasn't typing while what I was talking. What were you talking. doing? Sitting down, talking to Danny on the phone. What were you wearing? Um, probably jeans and a t-shirt. Well, okay, well, you probably were. What were you wearing? You remember it. No, I remember I wasn't typing. I didn't say I remembered what I was wearing. Now you just remember that you weren't typing, right? Yes. Because you were typing the suicide note to frame your daughter, weren't you? No, sir. Yes, I'll overrule it. And we caught you, didn't we, Mrs. Caster? No, you didn't. Just with that little phone call, with a little click, click, click. Mommy, please don't hate me. Right? No. So then you went on, those, on September the 7th and got your Miranda warnings from Mr. Spinelli, right? Yes. You and did. you started crying. Uh, yeah. And you wanted to know at the end if you were going to be arrested, right? Yes. In fact, you spent most of that week asking your friends, geez, if they found Michael with antifreeze in his body, how come they haven't arrested me? I don't remember saying that. You don't remember saying that? So the wiretaps, you listened to the wiretaps, didn't you? You probably said it a dozen times, Mrs. Caster. Isn't that true? You asked if I remembered saying that. No, I did not. Well, you remember. You remember that you weren't typing. I figured you might remember that, too. I made a lot of phone calls and received a lot of phone calls. I can't remember all the things that I said. Now let's talk about these spankings that Ashley got, right? How many were there from Michael? Never counted. Well, my God, you can remember that you weren't typing from three years ago, 
certainly you would remember something about spankings to your daughter, especially when they were so severe as both you and your mother have described them. You don't remember how many there were? No. So Ashley may have been correct when she said there were three. I believe there to be more than three. Why do you believe there were more than three? You just said you don't remember. Ashley was disciplined by Michael a lot more than three times in her life. Hundred? Maybe not. I, I don't. 50? I can't. I don't know. You don't care what the number is as long as Ashley's uh, not correct, right? Is that about it? No. So if Ashley had said ten, you would have said it was twenty. If Ashley said twenty, you would have said four. Is that about it, Mrs. Caster? No. If Ashley said 20, she said three. I believe there to be more than three times that she was spanked by her father in her life. These were severe. Both you and your, your mother used the same word. They were severe, right? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Where are the child protective reports, Mrs. Caster? Isn't it a mother's number one duty to protect her children? Yes. Where are the child protective reports, Mrs. Caster? There aren't any. Did you have a key to David Caster's bedroom door? No, I did not. Did you hear your daughter Bree testify? Yes, I did. And is she part of the conspiracy against you? There's, I did not have a key to the bedroom door. I didn't ask you. I already asked you that. You said that on your oath that you don't have a key to the bedroom door. Is Bree part of this conspiracy to frame you for these murders? I'll, su I'll sustain it in that form. So Bree was incorrect when she said on that weekend that you were in and out with a key to the locked to the door that you claimed was locked. Yes. Okay. When did you first see the jug of antifreeze that was found in your dead husband's bedroom? When did I see that? In a picture? First time ever. You never saw it that weekend? No. And when you opened the door on Sunday to reassure Bree that David was okay, what did you see? That was Saturday, not Sunday. Bree says it was Sunday. It was Saturday, because Sunday I couldn't Bree get into the... Bree says it was Sunday. You're saying she was incorrect. Yes, I am. You're saying she's wrong about the last time she saw her stepfather. Yes, I am. Right. And she looked in, and she said he was naked. No, he wasn't. He was covered up. She says he was naked, lying across the bed. No, she did just not. Just like the photo that we put into evidence, right, Mrs. Caster? She did not say that. She didn't say that? No, she okay. did not. When's the last time that you saw David Caster alive? Five o'clock Sunday morning. What did you see? Him sitting on the edge of the bed. And he was normal, right? His eyes were open and he was breathing? He was actually sitting on the edge of the bed, dry heaving. No antifreeze in the room that you saw? No, sir. Okay. So I just want to uh, conclude on this point regarding that. The guy is staggering. He can't walk. He's collapsed on the floor several times. He's got a gash on his leg. He's vomiting. He couldn't get out of the tub. Michael Coleman smells no liquor on his breath. He doesn't even know who Michael Coleman is. You've already lost one husband. You work for Rural Metro. And did you, yes or no, pick up a phone and dial for an ambulance? No, I did not. You left him on the floor Saturday night and went over to party at your, Col at your friends, the Coleman's, right? I didn't go to my friends to party. Well, you went over there to do what? Have a lousy time or what? Why did you go over there? To socialize, we were talking, I was upset. Okay, so you went over there to have a good time? No, I went over there to talk to You went over there to, to have a bad time? I went over there to talk to Danny. To socialize. And you left your husband lying on the floor? Yes, I did. And this, is, this, this you think is normal, right? I was upset with him when I left him there. Okay, well, you sure showed him. Now, I'll, I'll directly comment be stricken. Now, you've had 16 months to think about this testimony today. You've had opportunities to listen to wiretaps, read affidavits, see reports, so forth and so on. You've got two very competent lawyers defending you. Tell the jury when it is that Ashley had the opportunity to poison David Caster. Objection, Judge. No, I'll overrule it. Um, she was home alone with him on Friday afternoon. She was home alone with him again on Saturday. There was opportunity for her to do it. So 
How long was she with him on Friday? Uh, I'll overlook. I, no, I'm going to overlook. I don't know how long she was home alone with him on uh, Friday. I was gone Saturday? for about a half an hour. Again, I was coming home. She was home when I got there. I don't know when she arrived. Okay. And, um, all right, I don't have to ask you any questions about the will. The will's a forgery, right? You finally admitted that. I never denied that. Oh, you never denied it. You know, it's funny you say you never denied it because I heard one of your lawyers cross-examining our finger for, or our handwriting guy to suggest that David might have died. Remember that? Did I, you, like, tug at him and say, hey, don't, don't ask those questions. Uh, I'll, I'll, I, I, I'm going to sustain it. I'll sustain that. Go ahead. I want to ask you about Exhibit 36. This is the eight-page affidavit that you gave to Detective Lashinsky. I'm going to read along here, and you tell me when to stop if you hear something that's not correct. I'm on the bottom of page one. David and I have been having numerous fights about my children and his not being involved with them. True? That was true. Friday, August 19th, was also supposed to be a celebration of our anniversary, which was on August the 18th. I knew that, that if a discussion took place concerning our vacation, that David I, and I would get into an argument. I also have been somewhat afraid to bring things up with David recently because he snaps at the littlest thing. David also wanted our vacation to include a trip to Indiana to look over Fleetwood Motorhomes and to Sandusky, Ohio, and to go to Cedar Point Amusement Park. All that true? Yes. That's, I mean, that's, that's a lot of detail there. Fleetwood Motorhomes, Sandusky, Ohio, Cedar Point Amusement Park, and it's all true. Yes, it is. I knew that I was not going to go on vacation with David if he was going to exclude Bree from going with us. I knew that my daughter Ashley would have to work, so she would not be able to go on any vacation with us. True? That's true. David called me on his cell phone on Friday at about 3 p.m. and told me that he expected to be home around 4 or 4.30. I then took shrimp cocktail and ribeye <coughs> steaks out of the freezer in order to prepare a celebration dinner. I had also gotten fresh vegetables earlier in the week in order to steam them for the celebration dinner. I also put a bottle of Southern Comfort, page two, and a bottle of vodka in the freezer because David likes his drinks cold. All true? Yes. David drinks Southern Comfort and I drink the vodka. David poured a full glass of Southern Comfort with no ice in a tumbler and he started drinking it and talking to me about the difficulties on the Messina job. I listened to him for a little bit and then I brought shrimp out. He then slammed the glass of Southern Comfort very quickly and poured another drink of Southern Comfort. He and I then went into the bedroom and I rubbed his feet because he had told me that his feet hurt from the Messina job. David then brought up the vacation and I told him I was not interested in going on vacation unless Bree was included. David then went off talking about my children, Ashley and Bree, and the fact that they never clean their rooms or the bathroom sufficiently. My children and I had moved into David's house when we got married, and there have been issues continually over my children keeping the house clean enough. All true? There All is true? Yes or no? Yes. There is. I'm going to overrule. It's cross-examination. I then walked out of the bedroom, intending on starting the grill, but I never got to the grill. David had gotten up and was arguing with me about the vacation and my children. He was right in my face at the time he was arguing with me, and I knew he had drank too much southern comfort when he was acting this way. We argued from about 5 p.m. until 9 p.m., and the argument went up and down, but there was no physical confrontation. True? True. Post office? Anywhere? No, that from the Ashley beginning. being alone with David? Anywhere? No, that was left out. I then got a telephone call from my daughter, Ashley, requesting that I pick her up at Wendy's, where she works. I was going to pick her up there and take her to her friend Connie Speech's house at 115 Pedden Place in Liverpool. It had been prearranged that Ashley was going to Connie's house so that I could have time alone with David. True? True. I picked up Ashley at Wendy's and dropped her at Connie's house. True? True. When I got home, David had the bedroom door closed. It was locked. I went back to the couch and eventually dozed off. At about 4 a.m., I woke up 
went out into the garage in order to have a cigarette. David and I tried not to smoke inside the house. David then came out into the garage holding a tall kitchen glass with what I think was Diet Pepsi in it. True? It's true. And then you're alone with him from 4 a.m. until 11 a.m. Correct. And according to your affidavit, you've been alone with him since 4 p.m. on Friday evening. True or false? No, I left. According uh, to your affidavit, true or false, you, have, you indicated that you were alone with him from 4 p.m. until 11 a.m. the following day. Um, that is not my affidavit. That was Detective Lashinsky's interpretation of what I said, and it was not in there, the information about me leaving them being alone. I don't know if you saw the movie, you know, where Linda Blair's head turns around. I just want to object. You signed, I'll, I'll direct your disregard there. Go you on. signed this affidavit. Yes, I did. You made corrections to it. Yes, I did. And just listen to this question, yes or no. In the affidavit, you indicate that you're alone with him from 4 p.m. on Friday until 11 a.m. on Saturday. Yes or no? Yes. Actually, I don't think there's a time in there from when I'm alone with him. the question. Now you know, from listening to the medical evidence, that it's at that time, that window, that David, your husband, was dosed with fatal, uh, fatally with antifreeze, no, right? Okay. I'll over I'll overlook. You heard Dr. Stork testify, right? Yes. And she indicated that the dosage was probably sometime Friday evening up until sometime on Saturday, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to overrule. Now let's talk about the things that you claim are not suicidal that David said to you. Did you tell Detective Lashinsky about David? He also told me that he did not want to die alone and he was worried about his death. Did you tell her that? Yes. He also told me that he did not want to be buried without his companion. Is that, is that what you told her? Yes. David also stated that he was concerned about what I was going to do or if I would live with my kids when I was older. Did you tell her that? Yes. And that's what David told you, right? Yes. And then you told her that on page four that David was seeing a psychiatrist. He had, he had previously seen a psychiatrist, not while he was with me. I know that David was seeing a psychiatrist after his ex-wife Janice left him, right? That's correct. You, you told Detective Lashinsky that? Yes. And then you said, <clears throat> he told me that he had lost his will to live at that time. After his ex-wife left him, yes. So you were telling her that this must have been a suicide, right? No. And then the police, some of them thought it was a suicide, right? I don't know what the police thought. So in 2000, when Michael died and you told him that his heart, he had heart disease in his family and they said it was a heart attack. Now it's 2005 and you say, look, David was talking about dying and where he was going to be buried. And then that was, that was ruled a suicide, right? I didn't have any control over what, who ruled what. Well, I didn't ask you whether you ruled it a suicide. It was ruled a suicide, right? Yes. So, isn't that an amazing coincidence, Mrs. Castor, that a guy, that a guy who's thinking about suicide is being murdered at the same time? I mean, did you ever think about that? Objection, Judge. I'll overrule it. I never said David was contemplating suicide. Well, you thought it was a suicide, right? Yes. Okay. So now we know he was murdered. What are the odds that a guy who's thinking about killing himself is being murdered on the very weekend that he gets killed? It's like Lou Gehrig dying of Lou Gehrig's disease. It's, yeah. an, it's an unbelievable coincidence. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll sustain that. Well, how would you characterize it? Objection, Judge. The form of question. No, I'll overrule it. I don't know. Bill, can I break here for calendar? Sure, Judge. All right. We'll take about a uh, oh. 
We're going to ask you to return around uh, 20 minutes to 11. Please don't talk about the case and don't form any opinions about it. Mr. Caster, on the morning of September the 14th, this would be 07, the most devastating day in your life, you saw People's Exhibit 1, the note that you claimed your daughter wrote, correct? Correct. Describe its condition when you first saw it. Um, my daughter Bree was holding it when I first saw it. What did, you, what did it look like? It was, she was holding a piece of paper. Was it folded? Uh, not when she was looking at it, she was reading it. You took it out of her hands? Yes, I did. And you said that you glanced briefly at it. I was on the phone with 911 when I took the letter from Bree and I was... My question was, yes. you glanced briefly at it. Yes. And then later you said you had it again and you just skimmed it. Correct? Yes. Now, when you were looking at the note the second time, was it folded in any way? No. It had I been. Exhibit, I have exhibit 1B, which is a photocopy of exhibit 1. So it looks something like this. It had been folded, but it was not folded when I had it. Okay. Neither time? No. Okay. I want you to... Uh, reenact what you did the first time that you looked at this note. Did you read it to yourself? You read, you didn't read it aloud, correct? No, I was holding okay. it. Show us what you did the first time. Well, Bree was holding it. I took it from Bree, read it, put it down. I was on okay, the that, that just took you four seconds. Is that accurate? Well, I, you want me to actually read like I was reading it? Yes. So say when you started. I'm starting. Okay. All right, that was seven seconds. Now, a lot of things are going on, various things are happening. You are concerned that this could be a suicide <clears throat> note, correct? Yes. Then you later see Bree with this in the living room? No, I had it in the living room. You had it in the living room, and that's when you say you just skimmed it? Yes. Okay, and show us again how long it was that you skimmed it starting right now. Okay. 26 seconds. That's a long skim, but that was it. 26 seconds, correct? Yes. You sure of that? Do I know for sure I read it for 26 seconds that well, not morning? Not exactly 26 seconds, but to, you're sure that you held it for more than 20 seconds? Yeah, I, I, I can't tell you exactly how long I had it in my hand. I looked at the note. All right, well, we'll, review, we'll come back to that. Now, um, I want to take you back uh, to uh, Saturday, and you say in your affidavit that, Exhibit 36, you say, I then stopped at my house, and David was in the bedroom sitting up. There was an empty glass on the nightstand, and he had difficulty walking. The empty that's true? Yes. Uh, the empty glass on the nightstand, was that a single solitary glass on the nightstand at that time? Yes. He fell onto the floor with his head facing toward the bedroom closet and his feet facing towards the nightstand. He lay flat on his back and he was naked. He told me to leave him there and I left. Is that true? Yes. Bree and I then went home at about 7 and I checked on David who was now sitting on the floor with his back against the bed. Is that true? Yes. <clears throat> and then you describe how Mike Coleman came over and the two of you helped him into the bed, correct? True, yes. I covered David up again and started to leave the bedroom. He then called me back, and when I leaned over, he burped in my face. He then apologized for his rudeness when I told him that had been rude. Is that true? Yes. Nothing else was said at that time, and I left the bedroom. Correct? Yes. Okay. Now, later, 
You remember that Bree asked you if he was okay when she heard him coughing, correct? Yes, that was Saturday. Bree was, Bree was concerned about him most of that weekend, wasn't she? At she that... Was she was certainly concerned about him on Saturday and Sunday, wasn't she? Saturday, yes, when she asked Not Sunday? Him. She didn't really say anything about it on Sunday, How old I remember. Was Bree, how old was Bree in 05, in August of 05? Um, 13. Is that a guess, or you don't remember? 14. She was 14 in August of 05. Then you began to relate how we wanted some cranberry juice. You got him some cranberry juice. You never touched that liquor bottle that was on the nightstand, correct? Yes, I, at one point I must have. Well, now that you know your fingerprint is on it, but initially you told that Detective Spinelli that you never touched it, correct? Yes. The only other things that would have been on the nightstand with the juice and two glasses would have been the telephone, the radio, lighthouse, decoration, and a coaster, correct? Correct. Exhibit 17A. <clears throat> the glass that I'm pointing to with the green liquid in it. Yes. When did your fingerprints get on that glass? Uh, when I brought it to David with water in it. And you say on your oath it's the same glass? As far as I know, I don't have any reason to believe it wasn't. Well, that's the first time you've ever said that, isn't it? It's the first time I was asked that I thought that that was the same glass. Detective Spinelli never asked you about that glass? Specifically, no. He asked me if I brought those to David. And the glass that I'm pointing to here, did you ever see that glass before? Sure. I believe that to be a glass that I brought to David. The two glasses, except for condition, are identical in contents, right? They're not identical in contents, excuse me. They're identical in form. They're the same type of glass? Yes. Okay. This is the cranberry juice bottle that you brought in, yes. correct? Yes, yes. And this is the Hiram Walker apricot brandy bottle that you initially told Detective Spinelli you had never touched, correct? Correct. Now, Sunday morning, I then woke up at about 5 a.m. and went in to look at David. He was dry heaving at the time that I looked at him and the blankets had been pushed onto the side of the bed near the wall. I then pulled the bedroom door shut and stepped outside because I can't deal with people vomiting and did not want to watch him have the dry heaps. Is that correct? Yes. You woke up at 9 o'clock, you went to check on David, and the bedroom door was locked. Correct? Correct. And you never had a key to that bedroom door, correct? No, I did not. Both your children are wrong about that point, right? I never had a key to that bedroom. Both your children are wrong about that point was I'll my overrule. question. I'll overrule it. Yes. I then stopped home the second time after dinner, and Ashley went in to get her charger for her cell phone. <coughs> Is that correct? Yes. Now, yesterday you told us that Ashley went in alone, correct? Um, yes. But in your statement, which is true, you said the door to the bedroom was still locked when I went in, and I listened at the door, and I could hear David snoring. Now, which is it? Did you go in with her or not? Well, I would say since that happened... Did right you go after... in with her or not? Yes. So yesterday you were mistaken? Yes. <clears throat> and you conclude your statement by relating an incident where you and David watched a 48 hours television show that you, that you actually watched twice, where some woman killed two husbands by putting antifreeze in their green jello. Correct? Correct. Now, David's death is ruled a suicide, right? Yes. When do you learn that the police are reinvestigating this as a potential homicide? September 7th. Two years later. Correct. Not one single friend of yours said, Stace, the police were here interviewing us. They're asking us questions about you and David. Lynn Pulaski didn't tell you that. Danny Coleman didn't tell you that. Mike Coleman didn't tell you that. Not one single person tipped you off that the police were beginning to think this was a homicide. Is that your statement, yes or no? That wasn't until Is that your statement, yes or no? Objection, Judge. No, you have no question. I'll overrule it. No. So on September the 7th, 07, 
The police are investigating this as a homicide. That's the first time I heard of it, yes. And you talk to Spinelli for several hours, correct? <clears throat> About three and a half, yes. Did anyone during those several hours ever use the phrase rat poison to you? No. Now you say you admit that you said the word anti-free to Detective Spinelli. Yes. I want you to uh, tell us that, or strike that, you, you, you tell us that Detective Spinelli was holding up this photo, Exhibit 17. Correct. Was he close to you? Yes. He was holding the photo? Yes. How were his hands positioned? Was he pointing to anything? Yes. He was pointing to what? He was holding the picture like this and actually pointing to this glass like this. Okay, let me have it back, thank you. And he, what did he say to you? We were talking about um, when David, got, when I took the glasses to David, and he's like, I'm asking you about this, and he's pointing to the glass, this glass, which, you know, and I had pointed. All right, let's reenact it. Okay. I'm asking you about, and you, you tell us what you said. I'm asking you about this glass. About the glass. He's I'm asking pointing you, to this. I'm asking you about the glass. Mm -hmm. And I said that that one, I pointed to this glass, and that's the glass that the cranberry juice was in. What did he say? Whole, he didn't say anything at that point. He's pointing constantly to this, drawing my attention to it. And I said, that's the glass that I poured. The antifreeze stopped and said. Oh, you just said antifreeze. I said free is what I said. Okay, let's do it again. So now that I know what Spinelli said, and I want you to do it exactly as it happened on September the 7th. I can't do it exactly as it happened. Why not? No, I'm going to overrule it. How could I do it exactly as it happened? Well, you remember it. There's you remember that you weren't typing. There's a bit of jet. You can't do it exactly like it happened. They're not at CID. It's not Texas Bill. No, I'm going to overrule it. <clears throat> Go ahead, say it. This glass, this glass. This is the glass that I poured the antifree. I stopped myself and said cranberry no, no, you, juice you, in. When, when you were talking to Detective Spinelli, you didn't say, I stopped myself. I want you to do it exactly as it happened. I'm going to overrule it. Go ahead. I said, this is, are you going to continue? This is the glass that I poured the antifree, I mean, cranberry juice in. Did Detective Spinelli confront you and say, whoa, you just said antifree? No. He just kept on asking you questions. Um, no, I believe at that time the interview was terminated. Did you ever say to Detective Costanza that your fingerprints might have been on the antifreeze jug or bottle? I don't specifically remember that, but I could have. How many times on the weekend that David Castor died did you see your daughter Ashley Wallace in your bedroom. I didn't see her in my room at all. Not one single time, correct? No. Now I want to talk to you about September the 12th, Wednesday, September the 12th. And I want you to tell us... 2007? 2007. Okay. Let's go through your activities for that day. What time did you get up that day? Uh, 7 o'clock, approximately. You were home alone, except for the time that you went to Marion's house? No, I was not home alone all morning. At what point were you home alone? Um, um, I'm not really sure exactly what time Mike left, but maybe 9 o'clock. I, I don't know specifically, but I wasn't home alone all morning, no. How many times on Wednesday, September the 12th, 2007, were you on the computer? I can't answer that question. I don't know. How many times on September the 12th, 2007, was Ashley on the computer? I can't answer that. I don't know. Why don't you know? You were there with her. Did you see her on the computer that day? I didn't sit in the living room the entire day. I was doing other things in other parts of the house. I can't tell you. She wasn't home from 8 a.m. until you picked her up at school, was she? No, that's correct. Okay. So Ashley Wallace was not on that computer from 8 a.m. until 3.15 p.m., you say that on your oath? Yes. Then from 3.15 p.m., when you picked her up, where did you go? 
Uh, we went to Syracuse. When's the next time you came home? <clears throat> um, 7 o'clock, maybe. 7 p.m.? I think around 7, yes. Was Ashley with you? Yes, she was. This is when you started drinking the Smirnoff? Uh, that was later, but after 7, we were all home together. Other people were over? Yes. Your computer is right in the living room, easily accessible? Yes, sir. Did you see Ashley at any time from 7 to 9.30 on that computer? Not that I can recall, no. Not one single time? Not that I can recall. So tell me then, Mrs. Castor, how is it that she wrote Exhibit 1 and printed it on your computer? Don't overlook. Judge, how can she testify to something? Judge, I'm going to overlook. Go ahead, you have to answer the question. She could have done it at any time. I when? didn't. The, I was not always in the living room paying attention to what the, was happening with the computer. It's a 750 page, 750 word note, Mrs. Castor. When did she write that note in that 7 to 9.30 window that you've now given her? Did anyone know? Ashley, what are you doing? Oh, it's a suicide note. Let's go have a beer outside. Objection, you didn't see her do it, did you? Do not recall seeing Ashley on the computer. You were on that computer that day. Not that I remember, no. Not that you remember? Thursday, September the 13th, 2007. You tell us now that you bought vodka for an event that you were planning with the Coleman's that weekend? Yes. Did you talk to Mike Oxner about purchasing that bottle of vodka? I don't recall, no. Okay. Did you ever tell Ashley on either the 12th or the 13th of September 2007 that you weren't going to be around for her 21st birthday? No, I did not. Did you ever have anything to drink with her on uh, Thursday, September the 13th? No. Not one single thing? No. And had you ever seen her drink alcohol before? Sure I have. And had you ever seen her drunk before? No. How many times had you seen her drink alcohol before? A few. Would you say that she was a very light, casual drinker of alcoholic beverages? Uh, what she did when I wasn't with her. Would you her, say that she is a very light, casual drinker of alcoholic beverages? I can't answer that question. I don't know what she does when she's not around me. Okay. And on Thursday, September the 13th, she came home and wanted to take a nap. Uh, yes. And that's not unusual for her, right? No. And what time did she go in to take the nap? Um, between 1.30 and 2 o'clock, I believe. And the next time that you saw your daughter when she was conscious was when she was being carted out by ambulance attendants on Friday morning? Yes. 17 hours later? Yes. And this is normal, right, Mrs. Castor? Objection, Judge. I'll overrule it. I never said, Judge, Ashley. screaming at the witness. I, I just overruled it. This um, is normal. For Ashley to be in her bedroom for 17 hours? Sure it is. Sure it is. Sure it is. It's normal. And she was drooling, wasn't she? Was she drooling normally, Mrs. Castor? Objection, Judge. I've overruled it. Was she? I don't know. You saw her drooling, though, didn't you? That was a figure of speech. That it I was heard. a figure of speech! My God! You lost two husbands to poisoning. Your daughter has just learned that her father was dug out of his grave. You tell her, your boyfriend, that oh, she's drooling normally in the bedroom. That's my right. God. Is this, the, is this your testimony? <clears throat> That's not what I said. I'll, I'll, I'll strike the characterization. Did you say the word drooling? I said the phrase. Did you say the word drooling? Yes. And now you know you have to say that because we got it on tape, don't we? Yes or no? It was part of a phrase. Yes or no? Yes. A phrase? A joke? Why don't we listen to it? Go ahead. Exhibit 114, Your Honor.
Ecco. told him, I bought the vodka just to have in case I needed it. That's what you told him back then, right? Yeah. Now you're telling this jury, oh, no, no, I bought it for the celebration we were going to have over the weekend with the Coleman's. Which is it? I did not say it was a celebration over the weekend Which with the Coleman's. Which is it? I bought it to have it. In case I needed it. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Nothing about Oxner doesn't say, oh, yeah, that's right, we're going away this weekend with the Coleman's to party, right? No. No. Something else you made up because of what you heard in court, right? No. <clears throat> and then you said, I'm working on being okay, right? Yes. That's exactly what you were doing, working on being okay, wasn't it? I don't understand your question. You were working on being okay? Yeah. While your daughter's just been poisoned and lying in her bed. 
I do not know that my daughter's been poisoned. She's I believe been my daughter's normally. Taking. It's a figure of speech, Mr. Yeah. Fitzpatrick. And what was the good shit that Mike brought over, by the way? I don't know. Well, you didn't express any surprise when you were talking about it on the phone. You seemed to know what Mike Oxner was talking about. Mike was talking about Mike coming over to work on the fence. And he said Mike Coleman's going to bring some good shit over. What? I don't know. Was it dog excrement? Objection, no. Judge. I'll sustain it. You didn't, you didn't say to Mike Oxner, what do you mean? You said, great. Because Mike was coming over to work on the fence, yes. Yeah, but that's not what you said. He said he was going to bring some good shit over. What was it? I don't know what he brought. He brought stuff to work on his fence. So the good shit was referring to his hammer and nails or what? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to overrule it. I think he's asking her what she thought it meant. I don't know. I didn't. I well, on the phone call we just heard a couple minutes ago, did you say to Mike Axter, he's going to bring good shit over? What the hell are you talking about? No, I didn't. Because you knew what he meant. I didn't acknowledge it. I don't know what he was talking about. So now your daughter, now your friends come over, you guys party outside with the good shit or whatever else you had. We didn't and party. And your daughter's in the bedroom, and it's now 9 o'clock. So she's been in, in there about seven, eight hours, right? Um, actually, when Mike comes over, it's 5.30. Um, they left about 8.30 or 9 o'clock, yes. So your daughter at 9 o'clock has been in bed for about eight hours. Well... She was in her room. I don't know what she was doing in there. And while I was outside, I don't know what she was doing. Did you ever see her get up? No. Did anyone ever see her get up? I can't answer for anyone else. Anyone ever say, Ashley's in the kitchen having a sandwich? No. And then you checked on her a couple of times, right? Normally, as I would any other time, yes. Normally. Everything's normal. I checked on her. She was sleeping normally. She was drooling normally. Objection. I'll sustain. When you went in to check on her, did you see the vodka bottle anywhere? No. Did you see the note? No. How many times did you check on her from 9 o'clock until the 9-11 call the following morning? Twice. And both times she was in bed sleeping normally? Yes. <clears throat> you checked the alarm on Bree's phone that night, didn't you? I have done that. Yes or no? Time. Yes. Bree says it's the first time you ever did that. Didn't she say that? Yes, that's what she said. And then you went to bed, right? Did you hear your boyfriend testify about all these boxes that were at the end of your bed? Yes. That's not true, is it? There's trunks at the end of my bed. Well, he didn't boxes. say trunks, did he? I mean, I know this is going to come as a shock to you that I would accuse Mike Oxner of lying, but... There aren't any boxes at the end of your bed. Boxes, you want to see a picture no. of it? I know what was at the foot of my bed. No boxes, but there were trunks at the foot of my bed. Okay. And then your daughter's taken to the emergency room, and you give a statement to a Detective Phelps, correct? Yes. Review that statement before coming into court today? Yes. Exhibit 79. Everything in there true and accurate, or did he leave out stuff too? Um... It's true, yes. Okay. Now, I want to hand you People's Exhibit 1B, and I want you to read it aloud to yourself, just as you did on the morning of September the 14th, starting with Mommy, and stop when I tell you. Read it aloud. When you read the letter, just remember I love you and everything. Let's start with Mommy. Mommy. Okay, go ahead. Now? Mommy, when you read the letter, just remember I love you and everything I did is because I love you. I'm sorry all of this is happening to you, but now everyone is going to know what I what really happened. They know it wasn't you, it was me. None was very was ever supposed to know about daddy. I told you I told you when daddy died it was all my fault and it was daddy's doing you never knew about he was drinking when he was at Pick and Pull's house and at Lisa's house he was smoking pot again. I saw he was mean to you and me. He only ever loved Bree. I couldn't let him do those things to you anymore. Hey, stop. I actually let you go for 35 seconds, which is significantly longer than you indicated earlier in court. Would you explain to this jury how it is that you were able to tell Detective Phelps 
that the word Gatorade appeared in Exhibit 1? Because I didn't read every line of that letter. I told you I skimmed the letter and read through the... I just asked you to read it like you were reading it that morning, Mrs. Casper. How did you know that the Gatorade was in the note? Because I read it. Because you wrote it? Because I read it. So you're telling us that you just happened to see the word Gatorade? I happened to see a lot of words in that letter. I took the note, this is from exhibit 79, I took the note and looked at it real quick, then set it down. The note said something like, quote, mommy, I'm sorry. When you read, close quote, I saw the note mention something about her dad, so I put it down. Is that correct? Yes. Page three, I read the first couple of lines and I got the gist of it. Basically, Ashley said she had killed her dad. I couldn't read any more. Is that correct? True. Where's the part about I skimmed it or I jumped all over and I looked for other words? Where's that part, Mrs. Castor? I said I read it quickly. Huh? It, I said I read it quickly, briefly, whatever the word was that I used. No, you said I took the note and looked at it real quick, then set it down. The note said something like, quote, Mommy, I'm sorry, when you read, close quote. That's what you said. And you said that was true, right? Correct. And then you said, I read the first couple of lines, and then I got the gist of it. Basically, Ashley said she had killed her dad. I couldn't read any more. Correct? Correct. And yet, here we are with Exhibit 1B, when you read the letter, just remember I love you, and everything I did is because I love you. And you went on and on and on until you got to about where I'm pointing now. And if we look down here, there's the word Gatorade, more than halfway through the note. And yet you told Detective Phelps in the hospital, while your daughter might be dying in the other room, that you specifically remembered that she said something about Daddy's Gatorade. Is that right? Yes. How was that, Mrs. Castor? I read it. I put it down quick. Mommy, I'm sorry. When you read, I couldn't read anymore. Is that a lie? It's not the first time I read that letter, either. I read it earlier in the morning when I was talking on the phone with 911. I read all over it. Oh, wait. Now you're changing your story again. Objection. Now you're sto okay. now you're starting. I'll, I'll strike the comment. Go ahead. Now your story is that you read the whole letter. No, I did not say that. I said I read all over the letter, different parts of that letter. Well, you read it on Tuesday when you, when you started the draft. No, I did not. And then you read it on Wednesday when you were typing. No, I did not. And you went to your friend Marion's house to get some stuff, some information about Mike Wallace, so you could put that in the note, right? No, I didn't go to my friend Marion's house. I went to my mother's house. Oh, so you went to your, your mother's house to get the stuff to put in the note. I got, went to get my st stuff at my mother's house to give to my lawyer. What'd you get and give? Pardon me? What'd you get? I was looking for a folder that oh, I gave. I didn't say that. What'd you get? Did you get the stuff? No, I couldn't find it. I checked on Ashley before I went to bed, no later than 10.30. Ashley's fan was on, the TV off, and she was sound asleep, snoring as usual. I went to the bathroom around 1 a.m. and also checked on Ashley. She was still asleep, sleeping normal. That's your testimony? Yes. And then you say just at the very, very end on page six, 
The gist of it was she put antifreeze in her dad's Gatorade. That's what you put in that statement, isn't it? Yes. Now, I'd like to play a call for you. Call number 134, if Mr. Nolan could come up for me. This is a call on September the 12th, 2007. Hello. 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 I was just getting online to see if I got paid today, and my paycheck's not in my signing or my checking account. So I gotta. Stop it right there. So at 8:30 on Wednesday night, you're on your computer. Apparently yes. Apparently yes. Now let's move forward to 14 minutes and 30 seconds into this call. This is, uh, for the record, I think a half hour call. Hello? Hello. Hi. I don't want the jury to hear it all. No, time. I just, it's not, it's not anything to joke about, but you're right. You kind of got to laugh because I'm going to go crazy if I don't, you know. I mean, I know, and, and anybody that knows me knows, you know, I'm not capable of it. I didn't do it. That's the hard part. You know, I think they're dragging this out just to see how long they can drag it out before whatever happens, happens. To see if they can make me say something that, you know, I didn't do it. And I'm not going to say I did. And I don't believe for one second that they found any reason Michael's body. I don't believe it, Danny. I don't either. I think they're making it up. I honestly believe if that were the case, they would have arrested me by now. I mean, I, I don't believe that. There's, I mean, there's no way. There's no way. And if they did, I want to see the proof. And I want you to prove to me that that came out of his body. Did you dig up the right body? You know, I mean, prove it. Show me. You show me and then maybe I'll, but then you prove that it came out of Mike. Maybe I'll what? If you prove it, maybe I'll believe it. Maybe I'll admit it. No. Maybe I'll believe it. Maybe I would believe it. Play that again, okay? No. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, what? And if they did, I want to see the proof. And I want you to prove to me that that came out of his body. Did you dig up the right body? You know, I mean, prove it. Show me. You show me and then maybe I'll, but then you prove that it. Maybe I'll. Believe it? I didn't finish it. the statement. Thank you, Mr. Nolan. 
Is it true, Mrs. Castor, that the first time in your marriage that you ever stayed away from home was on the evening of August the 21st, 2005, without your husband? Yes, it is. Is it true that the first time you ever checked on Bree's cell phone alarm was on the evening of September the 13th, 2007? No, it is not. Is it true that you were looking for Matt Gandino's ATM card in the dark? It was not in the dark. Is it true that at the morning of August the 22nd, 2005, that you only made one phone call from work to check on your husband, David? To the residence, yes. And to a cell phone? No, that's not true. Phone company's wrong. Objection test. Yeah. No, Judge, I don't want to approach. I'll move on. Okay. Is it true that you said the word anti-free on September the 7th, 2007? Yes, it is. Is it true that the word anti-free appears four times in the note that you wrote? I did not write that note. Is it true that it appears four times in Exhibit 1? Yes. Is it true that during the 9-11 call, 9 call on September the 14th, 2007, you were concerned because your daughter's room was a pigsty? No. Did you say that, Mrs. Castor, on the 911 call, oh my God, the room's a pigsty? I don't remember saying that, no. Is it true that on the morning of September the 14th, 2007, when your daughter was lying near death in her bedroom, you were shaking by yourself in the dining room and you told your daughter, Bree, to leave you alone? I don't remember that happening, no. Is it true that you knew about Gatorade towards the middle to the end of, the, of Exhibit 1 when you spoke to Detective Phelps? Yes, I had read that. Is it true that the first time you ever answered Ashley's cell phone was on September the 13th, 2007, and you told Matt Gandino not to come over? No, I'd answered Ashley's phone prior. When Matt Dan Gandino called? Um, I, I don't think when Matt called, no. So the, tru the truth is that the first time you ever answered Ashley's spell cell phone and talked to Matt Gandino was on the afternoon of September the 13th, 2007, when you told him not to come over? Yes. And is it true that your friend Danny Coleman found a hidden bottle of Lexapro in your linen closet. Objection, Judge. How could she testify to what someone else did when she was in jail? No. <clears throat> I was told about that, yes. You didn't hide it there? No, I did not. Ashley did, right? I don't know who put it there. And is it true, Mrs. Castor, that in Exhibit 1, it reads, it was harder than with Daddy because you were always home or with him, but it did. Is that what it says in the note? Um, you're reading from it, yes. Well, it's right above the word Gatorade, so I assume you must sustain it. Objection, Judge. I'll sustain it. You want to see it? I believe you're reading from it. I believe you. You've never seen it in court? I've read that note, yes. You've seen it in court? read the note in court. You've seen it in court. You've seen the blow-ups. You've seen the testimony. Yes. And it says, but it did. Correct? Yes. And in Exhibit 118A, you say to your friend, Lynn Pulaski, I am going to stay right here and prove it didn't do this. Did you write that? Yes, I did. Mrs. Gasser, isn't it true that it did do it? Objection, Judge. Mm -hmm. Don't want to answer that? Oh, sure, I'll answer that. No. No. Objection, Judge. I'll direct your disregard that, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Stacy, I want to talk about that uh, Lashinsky statement, if I could. Okay. Do you remember Mr. Fitzpatrick was asking you repeatedly about whether or not uh, important details have been left out of that statement? Yes. And do you remember when you were trying to explain to them that they had and he didn't seem to accept your explanations? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. 
Do you remember when Ashley testified? Yes. Do you remember whether or not that she had said that she was home that Friday afternoon? Yes. Remember, what did she say? Objection, Your Honor. No, I'll overrule. Go ahead. I believe uh, she had been dropped off by her friend Connie and she was getting ready to go to work. Yes. Take a moment and uh, read up on that first page talking about Friday. Okay. Does that statement say anything about whether or not Ashley was home on Friday? Objection, Your Honor. Not proper use. Judge, you cross oh, 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 go ahead. No, it does not. a bunch of questions about whether or not anybody knew Ashley better than you did. Do you remember those? Yes. And you said that you agreed with that, that you were probably the person who knew her best. Yes. Did you know whether or not she'd ever been suicidal? No. We heard the testimony about that, but did you know that? Objection, Your Honor. I'll sustain it in that form. Mm. There were a lot of questions about the estate. There were questions about what checks were cashed and what was sold. Were, were those items separate from the estate or part of the estate? Some of them were separate and some of them were part of the estate. Do you remember exactly which were which? The life insurance policy, the IRA, and the sale of the truck, actually both trucks because one was mine, um, we're not part of the estate. The auction, um, and I believe that you mentioned something else, but the auction was part of the estate. And there was a lot of conversation. Again, I'm sorry I'm jumping around a little bit, but uh, there, were a lot of con there was a lot of questions about what happened with David when he fell down. When he fell, how hard did he fall? Objection. It's all over. Go ahead. Uh, he tripped and fell to the floor. He didn't, like, it wasn't like he fell dead weight. Did you see any obvious serious injuries? No obvious serious injuries, no. If you had seen any, what would you have done? Objection. I'll sustain it. We heard a lot of questions, or I should say a lot of testimony or in questions to you about, um, whether or not you were trying to imply or state that David was suicidal. Do you remember all those questions you were asked? Yes. Did you just bring that up? No. How did those things end up in your statement? How did those responses end up in your statement? I was asked specific questions about those things. And were you, so you were, were you trying to answer those questions? Yes, I was. What about this uh, thing about the TV show? Did you just volunteer that? No. Who asked you about that? A couple of different detectives and police officers has asked me why uh, I thought or where I thought David would have gotten the idea to drink antifreeze. I'll talk about the note a little bit, okay. your handling of it. 
Yes. Can you say today exactly to the second how long you held it at any one of those times? No. Why not? I didn't okay. count. No, I'll overrule it. Go ahead. Why not? Because I didn't have a watch on. I wasn't counting how long I read it. I skimmed the letter. What was, what, what was going on around you at the time when you were holding it? Objection, Your Honor. <coughs> I have to the last answer and I was leading it. No, I'll overrule it. Go ahead. Um, the first time I was on the phone with 911 talking to them about Ashley. Uh, the second time uh, they were taking her out of the house, I was sitting in the living room and there were detectives and police officers and people in and out. It wasn't, I was just, you know, sitting there reading the letter. There was a lot going on around me. And was that the only time that you looked at or read the letter? No, I read it after. Let's talk about this, uh, this uh, apricot brandy bottle. Yes. You said, I believe, in your statement, or I should say, we heard Detective Spinelli say that you told him that you didn't know where it came from. And we also, Mr. Fitzpatrick, I believe, asked you some questions, and you said essentially the same thing. Do you remember that? Yes. Other than that Southern Comfort you'd mentioned, what, do you know if there was other liquor in the house? Yes, there was. Where was it kept? Um, in the pantry. Where in the pantry? Um, the bottom shelf, way in the back. And um, do you know exactly what was in there? No, I do not. Why not? It wasn't anything that I drank or anything that David drank on a regular basis. I don't, I don't remember anybody ever drinking any of those that were in there. Did you buy any of the alcohol that was in there? No, I did not. Do you know if David did? I don't know how they got there. They were there when I moved into David's house. Do you know today um, any other types of alcohol that were underneath in that shelf? Um, there was a, I, I, after the fact I looked at them, there was a bottle of mixer, um, some peach schnapps. There were other bottles and I don't know offhand what any of them were. Again, we've heard a lot of testimony about possible discrepancies in maybe what you testify to today versus what you told Detective Spinelli versus what appears in your 2005 uh, affidavit to Detective Lashinsky. How many days after these events, or I should say after the, the, how many days after David had died did you give that statement to Detective Lashinsky? The next day. And do you think, or I'll ask you this way, is your memory of those events was it better then or now? Objection. No, go ahead. Then? We all started questioning about whether or not you'd been tipped off to anything about an investigation. <coughs> When was the first time that you had heard from police, or I should say, when did, when, was the, when, when did Detective Spinelli come back and interview you in 2007? Well, I'll, I'll let her do it one more. September 7th. And before that, when was the last time you had seen him? Three weeks after David's death. Now about Ashley being in bed all day, or in a room all day, how many other people were in and out of that house over the course of that day? Six, six people. Do you know whether or not any of them knew Ashley was home? Judge, I object. I'll sustain that. Judge, he repeatedly asked questions about what she thought other people knew. I should be allowed to do the same. Repeatedly. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Pardon? I was just going to say, I'll, I'll, I'll argue for it next time. Just you, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tribute to my flexibility. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Can you ask the question again, Chuck, please? Yes. Do you know whether or not those other people in the house were aware that Ashley was home in a room? I believe so, yes. Do you know if any of those other people called 911 that day before? Okay. No. I'll sustain that.
Now we heard in that phone call, or one of the phone calls I should say, you're talking about uh, whether or not you might have, you were thinking about whether or not they would arrest you at some point. Do you remember that phone call? Yes. Was that before or after you had met with me? I believe that was before I met with you. And did you meet with me? Yes, I did. And did we have a conversation about that? Jay, yes, I did. I'll sustain it. You're becoming a witness. Judge, no further questions. Recross? No, thank you. All right. Mr. Castro, you can step down. Come on up. <clears throat>
All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, subject to our discussion at the bench, do you rest, Chuck? Yes, Judge. Are right, you going to have any rebuttal, Bill? No, Your Honor. All right. I'm going to let you go for the afternoon. I'm going to ask you to come in Monday morning at 9, and we'll hear closing arguments, and then I will instruct you on the case. Please don't talk about the case amongst yourselves or with anyone else. Don't view, listen to any media accounts or view any media accounts about the case. Don't view or visit any locations you've heard about during the trial. Don't agree to accept anything about, for supplying information about the case till it's over. And don't form any opinions about the way the case ought to be decided. Have a great weekend. See you Monday, and stay warm. All right? <clears throat>